what do you think the difference is between um because i've heard that 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 uh, the europeans right and the russians and all that like they're everybody like i used to think that those guys were you know like they they train really intense and they're really you know hardcore and crazy and all that and uh then then i heard recently that actually no like the europeans the russians they they're actually very technical when they wrestle whereas the americans are more um uh i don't want to use the term meathead <laughs> but they're they're you know they, they they just go really hard like it's not as much it's not they're not focused as much on technique but they just like grind grind and and you know like you, you yeah, know what i mean so like they, they just go I, hard I know, I, i've seen i've seen this evolve okay so back in the like late 90s early 2000s the u.s was just that they would go out there and they had the brands brothers terry and tom brands and their big thing was it was this was the iowa way of wrestling they were just going to beat their opponents with sheer intensity okay so you'd often see an American go against a Russian and the Russian would score all these points. And then the, the Russian would start to breathe heavy and the American would run after him and just exhaust him and try to catch up. And sometimes the American would get them and sometimes they wouldn't, right? So what, what it was is the Europeans seemed to be a lot more methodical, technical. Yes, they were more technical, uh, you know, and where the Americans were conditioning, conditioning, pound, pound, pound. So I feel that that has changed, okay? Uh, and it's kind of happened with, uh, you had Cale Sanderson in 2004, he was an Olympic champion. And then you had Jordan Burroughs, 2012. Now, if you watch these guys wrestle, don't get me wrong. They are working hard. So that's another thing is all these Europeans, um, don't, don't think that they're out of shape. Don't think that they're soft because they're not, they're, they're very tough. It's just the Americans they're back in the late nineties, early 2000s, their way of training was pound, pound, pound the pavement, uh, work so hard that you're ready to puke your guts out and your opponent is ready to pass out, right? Uh, so, yeah, based on Kale Sanderson, Jordan Burroughs coming in, uh, these guys kind of got USA wrestling going towards where they're a lot smarter about their training. So they're still in excellent shape, but now they're looking at athletes. And Jordan Burroughs, for example, won his first world championship in 2011, won London 2012, and he's still competing. He just won a world championship in 2021, uh, just this past uh, this past fall. So now you have American wrestlers who are who are la lasting the distance. You used to have a, an American win the Olympics and they would retire immediately. Dan Gable, that's what Dan Gable did. He won the Olympics, retired. Tom Brands won the Olympics, retired. Go into coaching now. But Jordan Burroughs is showing, hey, we can be smarter. We can be, we can have the toughness that Americans have always had, but we can also be smart. We can listen to our bodies. We can do the proper training, taper off. We don't have to make our opponent puke. We have to outpoint them, right? So Americans have really changed. And because of that, they, they're doing way better overall in the team standings. They almost won the Olympic team title. They, I think they were two points behind uh, Russia. They were, that, they were that close. It was really, really a close uh, team battle. And they had every, I think every American except for one uh, on the men's side got a medal, which was, uh, which was outstanding, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. they, they really, they really perform. It's one of the best Olympics I've seen them, uh, in my whole life. So, so yeah, there's been a, there's been a big shift there. So you're right. Meathead really does describe it. Um, late nineties, early two thousands. And I used, we would go to the United States when I was training with my club back when I was in my twenties, we would go to the United States. And if you ran into, uh, like a top <laughs> U S guy, like one of the meatheads, like you call it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know what? You're, you're not just going to lose a wrestling match. You're going to get beaten up. Well, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, meathead, like, you know, for, for, you know, everyone, all the Americans listening, because I, I got a lot of American listeners. I don't mean that in a disparaging way. You know, I mean that more as, as a compliment, like, like a uh, savage, like a uh, barbaric, yeah. you know, like, like somebody who just grinds it and just goes through you no matter what, you know, kind of thing. So I don't mean meathead as in like uh, a dumbass. That's what, uh, not at all. You know, I just mean somebody who's really tough and just. You know, it's pure savagery and they just go all out kind of thing. So yeah. a good guy to watch. I say the perfect example is uh, Terry Branch from the U.S. And he wrestled for Iowa. If you watch his matches, he was the perfect example of that guy who would go out and break his opponent. They call it breaking your opponent because you just keep working, working, working. You get him so tired that you break his will. So mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a good example of that. Now, the problem with wrestling like that is that uh, these guys, they do that in their training too. So, 
And then there becomes a sense of pride. They're too, they're like, I'll never give up. I'll never stop. So they don't miss any training, right? Their body gets hurt. They get injured. They keep going. They fight through it. Kurt Angle won, uh, he won the Olympic trials in 1996. He won that with a broken neck. Eesh. Most people don't know yeah. that. Yeah, he had a broken neck. And because he was so tough, he just fought through it and won the rest of his matches. So, and then he went on to win the Olympics and now he's in WWE. Uh, but, you know, that kind of intensity, that kind of craziness. Some people survive, most people don't, right? When you have that level, of, a lot of people don't make it. Their bodies break down. Uh, so, so it doesn't work for everybody. And often, often it's not the most intelligent way to train. It's not the most intelligent way to prolong your career and win the most medals. And everything. So that was the U.S. before. I'd say back in the 90s, early 2000s, they were training people to ultimately win one Olympics. And then you're done like a horse, right? A horse runs a great race. Okay, now it's, now it's finished. We take it to the back and we shoot it in the head. It's gone, right? <laughs> now, Americans, though, they're training to win multiple world championships, multiple, and go on to win several Olympics. So they, they, they're definitely, they've changed a few things, and I think it's very much for the better. Okay. 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 But, but how do you, how do you balance that? How do you balance that out? Like training, you know, having that, being able to turn that on, like when it's time to compete, but then not necessarily training like that, like every single uh, training session, because that's how you wear out your body and get, get injured and all. And then, yeah. you know, being technical at the same time. And like, what do you think is better? Like, is it, is it like you want half, half kind of thing, or you're better off being, you know, technical. And, and that would lead me to my next question is like, what are, what, what, What's what's the number one country right now in, in freestyle wrestling? Okay, so yeah, number one country in freestyle wrestling are the Russians. Okay. They're, hands down, they're, they're the number one country. And yeah, they are very, uh, I want to say scientific about their training. You know, Again, don't ever think those guys are soft because they're not. They, they can really push and grind and uh, they don't get tired easily, right? They, they're in very good shape, but, uh, but they're definitely more scientific. They... they ah. Russians make it a career, okay? Like in America, Kurt Angle. He won the Olympics in 1996. He's not a millionaire yet, right? He's not. He still has. What, what, where does he go next? He goes to WWE and becomes a household name, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in Russia, freestyle wrestling, being a champion in freestyle wrestling, winning an Olympics is enough. That's, that's how you make your name right there. They reward their Olympic-level athletes at the highest level in Russia and the wrestlers are really well treated. They, they live very well. If they win the Olympics, they live very well. Uh, Saitia, I don't know if you've heard of Bubesar Saitia. Uh, he's the most successful freestyle wrestler ever from Russia. And now he's part of the, the Russian Olympic coaching uh, team. He's one of the head coaches. And uh, I think his brother who was also Olympic champion is in politics. So these guys have a high, high status because of what they accomplished mm. in wrestling. So. Uh, so that, that's another thing is that re wrestlers are much, much better rewarded in a country like Russia than they are in, in the United States and especially in a country like Canada. So it's a big, big deal uh, for people in Russia. And the same thing goes for Iran. Iran wrestling is their national sport. So when they win the Olympics, they're on another level. They're like, it's, because, it's like becoming Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's at that level through the sport of wrestling. So Jordan Burroughs, as great as he is, right? We know his name. I, he's my favorite athlete, but that's because I mm -hmm. love wrestling. But does everybody, is he a household name, right? If you go to many homes in America, random homes all over the country, most of them are probably not going to know who Jordan Burroughs is because wrestling doesn't have that. They don't pay that much attention to wrestling. Is okay, that okay. Yeah, that, that's really interesting because, um, you know, like my, um, my first uh, judo coach, right? He comes from a family, half of his family, like, I think it's on his mom's side. Everybody's like a, um, uh, they're all in wrestling, you know, freestyle wrestling in France. <laughs> and, and a lot of them were like world champions and even Olympic champions. And then on the other side of his family, I think his dad's side, everyone was high level judo, like judokas. So, and he, what he was telling me, and, uh, I realized that this is not necessarily true. It depends on the country. Uh, after after what you just said, 
is that he was saying how in judo you have longevity. Like after you, your career is done, you know, you still have your belts, your black belt, you have your dance, you could become a coach. You could, you know, you're still kind of respected and all. Whereas like in wrestling, you get a medal and that's it. See you later. Yeah. yeah, but but There's now no belts in wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. There's no belts, and you only got two what two two colored uh what do you call that again uh you know that swimsuit that you guys wear that that that, that you guys swimsuit. wear. Oh, 